Hello, welcome to this BigML tutorial. Today we will analyze a dataset. This dataset is a home credit default risk dataset that a bank has provided. And basically our job will be to create a model that will best predict who will default on their home loans. This demo will be a step-by-step -step process showing how to eventually reach the desired model. Once we open the BigML website, we will want to go to our dashboard where we get to manage all of our projects. Our first step is relatively simple. We will have to choose the source. In our case, the source will be found on your local computer. We will click on the credit default loan dataset and open it. While the source is loading, we will also retrieve the source of the test dataset, which will be found in the same folder. There's different ways of retrieving sources. Sometimes you could also use URLs. One good thing to note about BigML is that it does run parallel tasks, and this saves you and me a lot of time. Once our sources have finished downloading, we will open up the training data. Here, we will want to create a dataset by using Configure Dataset. We have the option of choosing the sample size, but since we want to take advantage of the full dataset, we will choose 100%. Then we will click Create Dataset. While this is loading, we also want to create a dataset for our test data. However, we will not be using Configure Dataset this time. Instead, we will use the method of one-click dataset in the one-click menu right next to the Configure menu. After our datasets have been done processing, we will enter the main training dataset. BigML does a wonderful job of giving a small summary of how our dataset looks. It gives each field, and each field is accompanied by a metric that describes instances count, missing, and errors. Also, BigML sometimes decides to not prefer certain fields. These fields are usually when a certain column has all unique values, such as IDs. This will not help your model, and therefore it is left out. It is also very important to check that your target objective is labeled. In this case, our target objective is not labeled, so we will mark it as target and save. After we saved our target field, we will create a train test split. It is important to create a train test split from our original training data, because the new test dataset will be useful in verifying our model's performance once it has been finalized. BigML allows us to pick the point where our split will be conducted. The default is an 80-20 split, which is usually the industry average, so we will leave it at that. Now, we can click the Create Training Test. Once we have the final training data, we will create a simple tree model using BigML's one-click model. This will allow us to get a better understanding of how our data behaves. As one can see in this tree representation, our root node is Exasource 3. Exasource 3 is a statistic that banks use to measure account holders. The children of the root will be made up of different rules. Traversing of the tree will concatenate these rules and will eventually show you a prediction of if a person defaulted on their loan. In this case, we are 78% sure that the instances that are subjected to these rules will have not defaulted on their loan. A great way to check how our data is behaving is through the model summary report. Here we can see which fields hold the most importance in our model. The top three are Exasource 3, 2, and 1. To gain even more information about this model, we could enter the partial dependence plot. The knowledge we will gain from this chart will help us in creating a new field in our dataset. Here, BigML allows us to compare fields of our choosing. I will focus on Exasource 2 and Exasource 3 since they are the two most important fields. Looking at the visual representation, we can see that the top right is a lighter color of blue, implying that this is a confidence zone. 
and the model is about 96% sure that a person will not default on their loan if they lay within this zone. In order to create a field that will label anyone who lies in the zone, we will track the measure of roughly 0.42 for exit source 2 and 0.53 for exit source 3. After we get these two statistics, we will go back to our training dataset. We will want to create a new field, and we will have to go into the Configure Dataset menu and click Add Field. Our new field name will be Exit Source 2 and Exit Source 3. There are many operations to choose from when creating a new field. However, since our field is pretty specific, we will want to create BigML's flatline expression, giving us a lot of variability and choose what we want to do. We will open the flatline editor and write in our code. This code basically says if field exit source 3 is greater than 0.53 and field exit source 2 is greater than 0.42, then the output will be 0. If it's not, the output will be 1. We then click validate, make sure it's a valid expression, and check the preview. Then we finally click accept. Once our, field, our new field is created, we can create the new data set. After the completion of our newly modified data set, we can do a one-click model to better understand how our new field behaves. And by checking the model summary report, as expected, we can see that our new field took the place as the most important since it combined the prior two most important features, Exit Source 2 and Exit Source 3. Once we have confirmed that our new field performs well, we will want to click on the dataset tab and go back to our finalized dataset. We will be using a new feature in BigML called Optimo, and to enter this, we will have to go into Configure, Supervise Model, and click on Optimo. Optimo is an optimization process for model selection and parameterization that automatically finds the best supervised model. This new feature can be very short or very long. Since we wanted to find a great model, we'll set the number of model candidates to a high number, such as 140, and give it a lengthy max training time of 3 hours and 30 minutes. After Optimal has finished processing, it will output all the classification models that it has computed along with metrics that will help you and I in comparing these models. Each metric measures something different, so it's up to the user to choose which one they want to order their models by. Accuracy, for example, would be useful if both the true and false instances are proportionate. However, in our case, there are a low number of true instances, the people that default on their loans, so we will choose the metric of phi coefficient. These metrics are explained more in detail in the optimal documents. Please click the link in the description for more details on these metrics. After choosing our preferred model, which is a logistic regression at top, we will enter our evaluation. When entering an evaluation of a classification model, BigML lets us view a confusion matrix to see how our model performed, more specifically, which ones it hit or missed. At first, it seems as if our model did very well, with a 92% accuracy score. But if you remember what I said earlier, our data has a disproportionate false and true instances, so there might be some error. This error can be best seen through the confusion matrix. We can see that the threshold for the true class is very low, and this implies that we should change the probability threshold. To best see what we will want to set our threshold at, we will enter the receiver operating characteristic curve in the top left of our page. Changing the probability threshold will make our model more sensitive to the true class. If we slide the threshold all the way to zero, our accuracy is still great at 92%. However, our model is not reliable since it labels everything as false. When we set the threshold at around 92%, our accuracy goes down. But as seen in the confusion matrix, our model does a much better job in classifying the true class, 
And this is important to us because targeting the people who default on their loans is more important than catching people who won't default. Once we have decided that this will be the final model we will be using, and the probability threshold that goes along with it, we will want to create our final batch prediction by entering the one quick menu and clicking one quick batch prediction. A batch prediction provides an easy way to compute a prediction for each instance in a dataset. Therefore, we will choose our original test dataset, which was modified test F3, and we will want to set the probability threshold that we agreed on earlier at 92%. After our batch prediction has been completed, BigML gives us the option of downloading our prediction as a CSV. If we open the CSV, we will see the original dataset that we inputted. And at the end of the dataset, there will be an extra column that will be all your predictions in the batch prediction. Thank you guys so much for watching this demo. Hopefully I was able to show you the benefits of using BigML to solve a real world problem. Have a wonderful day.